tornadoes on the sun, tornadoes ripping across Seneca. This is unbelievable. This is not this is not some coincidence. And don't adjust your cameras. Don't adjust your volume. You're hearing properly what's going on right now. Scientists came out before, right before the tornado started ripping across almost half of this filthy nation of Seneca, Sin Erica, formerly America. Emphasis on sin because we're a filthy, sin-ridden, festering, purulent cesspool whose stench rises up to the very throne room of God night and day. It's just disgusting here anymore. The, the uh, astrologers, astronomers saw a huge tornado <laughs> on the sun. Woo, 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 woo. The astrologers, astronomers saw a huge tornado on the sun. It's just impressive. Google it. Google it and look at it. It's a humongous tornado. It's very, very impressive. It is very ultra rare, ultra mega rare to find a tornado on the sun. You find, you know, little CMEs and little sunspots and things shooting off. Not a tornado. <laughs> when you Google it, check it out, man. It's an actual tornado. And then just after that was discovered, the worst tornadoes possible, the highest level tornadoes you can find, just start ripping across Seneca, starting off down in Alabama and just heading north, just tearing up a huge swath all the way across a huge chunk of this filthy nation, laying towns to waste and, and just this, uh, uh, this path of destruction everywhere. God's trying to wake us up, world. He's trying to wake us up, Seneca. What else can Jehovah God do? 24-7 now, night and day, he's pounding and pounding and pounding and pounding and pounding the earth with all kinds of tragedies and all kinds of terrible weather and all kinds of terrible storms and all kinds of famine and plague and pestilence and all kinds of, the Hosea prophecy is everywhere with the animals and the fish and the horses and everything dying. People can't see it. The church is asleep. Most of the church is extinct, spiritually dead. They're done. Only a tiny remnant of us are endangered species. We're not extinct yet. We're not going to be because the Lord will always save a remnant. But most of the church is extinct. Christians have their heads in the sand like ostriches. They aren't watching. They aren't waiting. They aren't looking. They don't know what's going on. They're clueless. They don't care what's going on. I've talked to people who have told me they're scared to hear about the end times. Or their family's scared to hear about the end times. It's ridiculous, man. Grow a backbone. Get a backbone of, of, of steel, of Kevlar from the Holy Spirit and stand up straight and put on your Holy Spirit vision. See what's going on. Take the hell goggles off, church. So many of you are just following Satan right now, living for him. He's your God right now, the little G. You can serve only one God, Jehovah or Satan. If you're backslidden, living in sin and iniquity that you haven't confessed, you haven't repented of, you're living for Satan. I don't care what Chief Grace says. I don't care what Once Saved, Always Saved says. The Bible has hundreds of scripture that prove otherwise. Google this name, Dan Corner, D-A-N-C-O-R-N-E-R-O-S-A-S, -E or Once Saved, Always Saved. You'll pull up the best resource in the entire planet next to the Holy Bible that totally refutes Once Saved, Always Saved. And the really cool thing is, this link has all those hundreds of scriptures I mentioned. They're all in one place. You don't have to dig for them. You can look at them and go through them and go through them and go through them. If you can read that, my friends, and still say you don't believe, you're calling God a liar, you call the Holy Bible a book of lies, and woe, woe, woe unto you, my friends. Satan's got you. He's dragging you down to the hellfire end. He's got your, your eternal accommodations ready for you in the lake of fire, in the pit. Man, it's incredible. A huge tornado, signs in the heavens. Huge tornado. Just on the sun, just everywhere. And then huge tornadoes. Just dripping across Seneca. Only Seneca too. This place, this place is a is a filth. It's a it's a it's a sewer hole. Man, we were founded on Jehovah God, on Jesus Christ. We were found, we mirrored Israel. We were like a mirror image for the first you know almost couple hundred years of our existence. And just as we mirrored Israel, we also turned on God as they did before. If you think that if you think God's gonna punish his chosen people, the apple of his eye, the original branches of the vine of Jesus Christ, Israel, if he's going to punish them, you don't think he's going to punish us? If God came down and rained down hell, fire, and brimstone and just it just totally annihilated an entire civilization of Sodom and Gomorrah down to the insects, down to the amoeba, you don't think he's going to do, do it to us here in Sodom and Gomorrah, formerly America? Man, this is the homosexual capital of the world right now. 
God's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. If he destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, Sodom and Gomorrah, you better believe he's going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Our time's coming. God don't apologize to anybody. And if he didn't, if he didn't take care of, of business here with us, he'd have to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah. He, Sodom and Gomorrah. He don't apologize to anyone. He's God, Jehovah God. He's the Alpha and Omega, the first and last, the beginning and the end. He's omnipotent, omnipresent. He's Godud, the epitome of goodness. Only God can be Godud. He don't apologize. He don't make mistakes. He's sick of this country. 54 million of his precious babies created in his image, murdered through abortion that we know of. Could be twice that with the back alley and the, and the little pills you're taking stuff for the morning after. Who knows how many it's been. He's sick of it. We've turned on Israel. We're a porno capital of the world. You know, late in 2010, the end of November of 2010, the Holy Spirit, as I was interceding for this filthy, wicked country, when I just read an article where babies were being thrown in a, in a garbage dumpster, I started interceding. I started saying, Lord, I'm so sorry. We're so terrible. He said, stop, listen. And so I did. He gave me several minutes of word right from the Holy Spirit, speaking to me, talk, telling me, tell the world, God's finished with your country. He's done. His hand of protection, gone. Hand of judgment, getting ready to come down on you. Any, any minute now. And you're going to be just hammered and pummeled. You, your nation will be on its knees begging him to stop. He's going to just keep pounding and pounding. Because all the reasons I told you and more. He's sick of it. Okay? We have, we have dug our graves right now in this country. And God is burying us. Okay? We've dug our graves. He's burying us. The divided states of Sinerica, Sodom and Gomorrah, we're finished. We, we, we had everything. We had everything, man. God loved us, protected us. We were, we were like a second apple of his eye next to Israel. He did everything for us. We won our wars. We had, we had success. We had family values. We had terrific. Everything was great. And look at us now. We're a filthy, perverted, festering, purulent cesspool. That's all we are anymore. You need to start waking up. Pull your heads out of the sand. Take the hell goggles off. Fall to your knees. Ask Jesus Christ to forgive you for being backslidden. Forgive you for all those sins and iniquities in your life. Come back to him now while you still got time before it's too late. Because my friends, time's almost up. Jesus Christ is going to break the skies. Any second of any day, he's going to split the skies. Only God knows the day and the hour. But God has told us, those of us who are watching, waiting, excited, watching the signs, reading the Bible, he's told us he'll give us a sermon and let us know the season. We're not just in the season, my friends. We're in the end of the season. I know this. God's given me word. He's given me dreams, vision. I know we're just waiting for God's final word. God's so patient. We can never understand his patience. But any second of any day now, the trumpet's going to sound. Come hither. The dead in Christ shall rise first. All of us who are living, who are Christians, who live the way the Bible says, cover to cover, all 66 books, verse, chapter, book, including repenting of sin after we're saved. Us and the, all the little babies and the young children below the age of accountability, whatever God decides, we'll all meet Jesus in the air and we'll go to heaven forever. Praise the Lord. But then you're stuck here for seven years of hell on earth. You think things are bad right now since 1 one eleven, when the Holy Spirit's word he told me six weeks after started coming true? You think that things are bad now since then? Oh, man. This is like Disneyland. This is like Jamaica. This is Jamaica, man. Now, just go on the beach, man, and go relax and do, do the thing, man. The Jamaica, man. Ari, Ari, Ari. That's what it's like right now. It'll be, it'll be like Jamaica, man, compared to what's coming for the seven years. It's going to be horrific. There's no time anymore for jive. No time to play games. It's time to get real. It's time to get serious. It's time to get real serious, okay? Let's just understand. God's giving us signs 24-7, day in and day out. He keeps hammering and hammering and hammering. He's mirroring what he did on 1-1-11. 1-1-12, the blackbird started falling in Arkansas again in BB. And all the fish started coming ashore and dying. The fish came ashore and disappeared. Millions and millions and millions of fish. Impossible for man. I studied marine biology for years and years. It's impossible for it to happen like that. Not for God, it's not. I'm telling you right now. We need to start understanding. Our time is short, my friends. Very, very short. And if we don't start getting serious and start getting our lives in order and start watching the skies, reading the Bible, looking at prophecy and seeing what's going on, you'll be left behind. That rapture is going to happen like that. There's no time for a do-over. There's no time for a timeout. There's no time for, a, oh, wait a minute, God, I wasn't ready. I was just, I was almost ready. Just give me a do-over. No time for that. Your feet will be like lead 
You'll be trying to jump in the air. You'll be stuck like your, your feet are in concrete. Buried in a new sidewalk just got poured. Okay? And when you're let, stuck here, like I said, seven years of hell, you don't want any part of that. So we need to start getting ready. We need to, we need to just repent so we can start being soul winners again. We can get out and reap the harvest. Share the good news of Jesus Christ. And get out there and do what he wants us to do in the little time we have left. Because there are, there are over 7 billion people on this earth. And the majority of them are either unsaved or backslidden saved. We can't do anything about the hundreds of billions who are in the ground right now. When that silver cord of life broke, wherever they were with Jesus Christ at that second, that's where they are for eternity. We can't touch them. The 7 billion plus, we can. Okay, And if we don't care enough about them dying and going to hell, if we don't care enough to understand that they're, they're not going to make heaven without Jesus Christ, then we don't appreciate what Jesus Christ did for us on the cross. Okay, he, did, he, did, he gave everything for us on the cross. Everything. And he was risen again on the third day after he died. Praise the Lord. But we, we owe him so much. We can never even scratch a service to repay him for all eternity. But if we don't, don't get out and reap the harvest and share the good news of Jesus Christ, we show him we don't care. We tell him, Jesus, we don't care. And we're not appreciative of what you did for us. And if that's the case, man, we're in big trouble. Shame on us. We're Christians. We're Christians. We represent Jesus Christ. We're Christians. Let's start acting like it, my friends. There's not much time. Let's get it going right now. Tornadoes in the sun. Tornadoes all across America. Ripping a path of destruction everywhere. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I love you so much. I thank you for everything that you do for us. I just pray that you would rebuke, correct, teach, convict. Don't give any Christian any peace, happiness, joy, comfort, satisfaction, anything, until we start caring enough to get out and reap the harvest, until we, until we, we just fall on our knees and repent if we're full of, if we're backslidden and full of sin and iniquity, unconfessed sin patterns, and just come back to you before it's too late. Help us, Lord, to know. Help us to understand what we got to do. There's no time to play games anymore. We got to get out there and reap the harvest. Share the good news of Jesus Christ night and day. Get back in the center of your will. Our time's almost up. We have to make a choice. Do we want to live in heaven forever or hell? Do we want to go in the rapture? We'll be stuck for seven years of hell on earth. It's a no-brainer. Please help us to understand Jesus. In your precious name I ask it. Amen. As always, my friends, if you watch this video and do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, pray this prayer with me. Jesus, I know I've sinned. I've done bad things in my life, and I'm sorry. I believe that you came to earth. I believe you died for my sins on the cross. I believe you rose again on the third day. I believe you went back to heaven to the right-hand side of the Father. And since that time, I believe you've been making a place forever for all Christians. Please forgive me of my sins, Jesus. Please come live in my heart. Cleanse my heart. Make me a new creature in Christ, a child of the King. In your precious name I ask it. Amen. You pray this, my friends. Jesus says in his own words that all who come to me and ask shall be saved. Not a few, not most, but all. If you'd like me to pray for you for salvation, send me an inbox, a private message. I would love to pray with you. If you have a friend, neighbor, loved one, or coworker who does not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, if you are sick, you have a sick friend, neighbor, loved one, coworker, you have a sick pet, anyone, if you need a job, car, home, food, clothing, water, anything, you'd like someone to pray for you, send me an inbox, a private message. I'd love to pray for you. I have the gift of faith. God gave it to me. I did nothing to deserve it. He just gave it to me. I now have mustard seed faith that the Bible talks about. And when I pray for you, I pray believing in my heart 100%. Speak with my mouth 100% knowing that God will answer all my prayers. If I pray within his holy will, he'll do the same for you, my friends. Test him. His word never returns empty. He showed me over and over and over again he'll do this. If you, if you, um, w thanks for watching this video. I know how busy we are, but please share this video, other videos, link to this channel with friends, neighbors, coworkers, loved ones, with strangers. Drop it in a blog somewhere, or drop the link in a post somewhere online. Plant a seed and walk away and let God water it so it can grow. It's not for anything that I've done. Jesus gives me, the Holy Spirit gives me every word, every title of every video here. I deflect all praise back to him. But people have to hear the Holy Word of God written the way, spoken the way it's written here on this channel. And that's all that I do. Okay? They have to hear it that way or they're not going to be saved or repent of sins and iniquities. They won't be able to be sanctified. They won't be able to get off the sidelines and reap the harvest. They won't have miracles happen in their life. If we don't do it, then they're not going to hear it. So let's get it out there now for Jesus Christ and all for his glory. I love you guys and I pray for you every day and may God bless you. Thank you.